what makes me Mexican? That's exactly what our daughter asked us a few weeks back. And it got the both of us thinking and talking and sharing. We started talking about our culture, about our family, our food, <laughs> our country, and about ourselves. <gasps> the memories. <laughs> Being, um, I mean, we started talking about all of those things, and the word community kept coming to my mind, and I was thinking, community. But that wasn't a word that I used to use as much as I do now that I live here in the mountains. You see, back in Mexico, I was part of something. I was part of everything just by being born there. I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to earn it. I am Mexican. But now, I am also an immigrant. And being an immigrant means many things. But for some of us, it also means it's an honor, but it's also hard work. It's something that you feel like you have to work for it, and you have to represent the, both of, the best of both worlds. So that's what we try to teach to our children. I love my immigrant community here. I love how immediately we recognize in ourselves our chatty, joyful, hardworking, and resilient nature. When I first came to the mountains, I thought, what a wonderful opportunity for me to practice my English. Boy, was I surprised when someone spoke to me in Spanish, in Aspen, of all places. <laughs> I was so surprised to meet so many Spanish-speaking uh, people from so many different countries. Then, over the years, I've learned that there's still a large population here in our valley for whom Spanish remains their, first, their only language. Now, when the pandemic arrived here in the valley, my husband felt very ill. It's like I've never seen him before. And it was really hard for me. That morning, I woke up, and I was looking for him in bed. I reached out my hand, and he wasn't there. And then our daughter came to our room, and she told me that he had taken her out of her bedroom, and he was quarantining there. Because we had this plan um, in place, in case of if any of us got it. And I felt like the world stopped. I was trying to be strong for him and for the children, but I was afraid because I knew that they are the only people that I have here in this country. And that was a scary thought. And I also was trying to remain strong and trying not to scare anyone, especially my mom and his mom. He's a journalist. So during that period, he was still doing, he was still broadcasting live. And in those transmissions, he looked so different, all sweaty, and his beautiful radio voice wasn't there. He was weak in, the, in his voice. And that was really hard for me. Deep down, I was scared that I could lose him. Thankfully, I didn't. He's here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, even though he was quarantining and he wasn't in the best shape, he had the clarity of mind of creating a Facebook group where people could ask for help, and hopefully someone else will have the answer to their questions and will know how to help, like an online support group. There, I was translating every bit of um, useful information that I came across regarding the pandemic, and everything I was translating in Spanish and helping a lot of people navigate the available resources in our valley. I still remember. <laughs> I still remember the first lady who asked me for help. She lived in El Jebel, she had a baby then, and she didn't have any money to purchase baby diapers and baby milk, and there was no toilet paper available. <laughs> we can all remember those traumatic times. <laughs> so, as soon as I posted on Facebook, dozens of people offered to help her. Someone brought her a box of goods to her home, the school district gave her a gift card, 
and I was just so touched by how our community came together for her. She was the first one. Now, over the weeks, the need for help increased, but the number of people who could actually lend a help started to decrease because job hours were being cut short. And that's where the power of our amazing nonprofit organizations was really felt. So <laughs> they, their commitment to helping the members of our community to the point of burnout was really outstanding and undeniable. And I know, because I was there, I witnessed it. When the need for rent assistance began, that's where the number of messages that I was receiving increased exponentially. I was replying people for countless hours. And it was starting to take a toll on me as well. The help was needed, and there, there were more questions than answers, obviously. Thank you. Can you say something, for example, about the social media, the power of social media? Yeah. <laughs> you know about Thank you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so the need was really exponential. I was replying to a ton of messages. I was feeling so exhausted, but at the same time, I started getting tons of messages of gratitude and words of encouragement. And that was really what motivated me to come, to keep going. Now, my husband and I really know the power of social media and the internet. And we should know, because we met there. <laughs> <laughs> But it, takes <laughs> but it takes a different meaning for someone who has left everything and everyone thousands of miles away. When you're trying to know this new community that you're joining, when you're trying to make those connections, that's why he and I try to use the internet as a, as a tool for good, as a place for compassion, and where people can feel safe to share what they are needing. Now, the level of trust that people show me every day through social media, it's unbelievable to me because they start sharing their stories and they have these complex and powerful stories that they share with me with a level of trust that I've never felt with someone I've never met in person. But in this era, to meet someone and be friends on Facebook or any other platform, means to be friends in real life. So to me, that's very powerful. And I've met some wonderful, amazing people there. And now I get to call them my friends. Now, strangely enough, the pandemic came to put many things in place for me personally and professionally. And it was all very organic. Our family got to spend so much time together. Our house became a radio station, a video studio, a school, and a home simultaneously. It actually brought us closer, and it made us stronger. We are stronger because of it. At the end of the day, I consider ourselves the lucky ones. Because for me, family is where community starts. Thank you.